Alrighty guys, good morning to you all here. It is July 21st, 2025. I hope you guys are all doing well out there on this lovely Monday. And uh, we've got severe weather to talk about. Once again, it's going to be, like I said, the common theme every single day going forward here. We're also got a tropics update here for our area here. You guys can see on the screen out in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, kind of headed toward the Leeward Islands here. Good news is this storm will start to encounter Saharan dust as well as a uh, very strong jet stream as it gets closer to the Leeward Islands. So it's basically going to rip this thing apart. So we're really not going to see uh, anything too crazy. Crazy. If this were to get organized, it would be between today and tomorrow uh, that it's got a 20% chance of developing. So really not expecting too much uh, in terms of this wave here for you guys here. We're also going to talk about the heat wave uh, that's going to be going on across this week. That's really going to be the main story. We'll have severe weather up in the Midwest, up in the Plains, uh, but mostly the United States is going to be locked in on a very brutal hot weather pattern that's going to be in place for a good a couple of weeks here. Uh, where we could see heat indexes as high as 120, heat actual air temps in the 100s to 110s for a lot of people. So it's just going to be really, really hard uh, and hot next couple of weeks here so uh drink water stay hydrated like i said uh limit yourselves outside you know only be outside if you really have to be if you're working use sunscreen all that stuff so just the common key things as we enter the hottest period of the year uh and then like i said we'll start to kind of see things potentially change as we change as we go towards uh the month of august here so I will let you guys know Tropic update-wise, we are starting to see signs of uh, some instability kind of getting itself together in the Atlantic. Uh, we've really not seen this hurricane season yet really pop off, and so hopefully that does not happen. But uh, as we get closer to September, uh, October, our peak season here, we could start to see those tropical waves become more uh, of a thing here. And as they get uh, closer to the Gulf or toward the Caribbean, that's when we have to start watching things. So um, like I said, right now, this area is not expected to do much of anything as of right now. I will let you guys know there's a couple more waves uh, that are going to be moving off here. Both of these will probably encounter this a lot of Saharan dust up here. Uh, you can see I'll, I'll show more in depth on this in uh, tomorrow's video or in our future live stream that we have, uh, whether it be tonight or tomorrow. But um, we will have a lot of Saharan dust that's going to be interacting with these storms. Uh, tropical systems don't like Saharan dust. They don't like shear. Uh, it rips them apart. It keeps them from forming. And so that's what's really going to be keeping things pretty quiet over the next little bit. Well, so we're going to watch this uh, because, you know, things can change. Things weirdly can happen. So uh, we'll be keeping you guys updated on that. Like I said, this will be moving toward the Leeward Islands here. We'll have some tropical downpours as this system moves over there. So if you're vacationing out there, just be weather aware. Nothing expected in the Gulf, nothing in the Caribbean. We've actually got a pretty quiet air mass uh, or a pretty chill air mass that's going to be over the southeast uh, over the next couple of days here. We'll have uh, storm systems across the Ohio Valley, the Midwest here, some severe weather will be uh, starting to ramp up once again over the next couple of weeks here as we go up into the high plains, the upper Midwest. Uh, Florida will also see the chance for some tropical downpours as we see a low pressure system once again hanging off the East Coast here. A lot of the models still really trying to pull this thing back into the Gulf, maybe, maybe a 20% chance of developing or something like that uh, toward the end of the week, but I'm just really not keen on that idea of that happening so we'll be watching all tropics all severe weather all that stuff for you guys if anything changes we'll let you guys know there i do want to go ahead and hop over to the storm prediction center and talk about our outlook here for today and we do have a general thunderstorm risk in the light green anywhere outside of that uh dark green and uh white area you'll see the general thunderstorm risk we do have a marginal risk for severe weather that extends from montana back down into denver colorado or east of denver colorado back up into kansas nebraska uh, iowa minnesota and the dakotas here where we do also have a level two slight risk at play here for damaging winds and hail back up here into Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. The tornado threat today is very, very low, but not zero. So there is a 2% chance of a tornado today within a 25-mile radius of a given location from western Minnesota back up into the Dakotas here and getting into eastern Montana. We also have the wind threat for today. Winds at 15 and 5% for winds up to 70 miles per hour and the hail threat today at 15 and 5%. I wouldn't be shocked to see SPC on the next update hatch the hail threat. We could see some larger hail out there, but that would be up to them if they decide to do that there. We'll talk about what the uh, future cast holds here in just a minute. We get to tomorrow outlook here and we do have another marginal risk back down here into the southeast where we will see that low spinning allowing for a little bit of instability some wind and some hail to potentially accumulate here maybe 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 an isolated tornado but less than two percent down there not expecting too much we do have a two percent tornado risk tomorrow for minneapolis minnesota we will be in live coverage mode tomorrow or at least on standby for live coverage mode tomorrow if in fact this does validate tomorrow uh we'll be here to cover that for you guys but there is a two percent tornado risk that goes from minneapolis minnesota back into central minnesota northeastern portions of south dakota and southeastern south dakota that slight risk and marginal risk is also out here for damaging winds up to 15 uh, percent and 5 percent here where we can see winds up to 70 miles per hour we'll also have the threat for hail again tomorrow we'll also be watching tomorrow there's a pretty interesting uh, couple of models that are showing a corridor of higher tornado parameters so we may get an upgrade to a five percent tornado risk either today or tomorrow uh closer to minneapolis minnesota so there is definitely a good chance that we see a couple tornadoes tomorrow with this event we'll kind of see what the storm mode is this afternoon we'll watch it kind of monitor uh what the setup is for tomorrow and i'll give you guys the update tomorrow in the video or in stream later on tonight we get 
get to the day three outlook and then another marginal and slight risk here. You can see a double barrel marginal risk with another one back over here from Denver, Colorado, back up into Montana for wind and hail. And then another marginal and slight risk again for the Midwest here as we see Minnesota, Minneapolis once again in a risk zone on the day three outlook for your Wednesday from all the way uh, there up through into northern Wisconsin, central Wisconsin and up into UP, Michigan. So the main area of severe weather this week is going to be uh, the high plains in the Midwest, and I've been talking about that because we're going to have a heat dome uh, that is going to be set up over top of most of the United States here, allowing for a trough to exit or uh, eject across the top of that ridge, and where you get that trough set up at, that higher wind shear uh, mixed with instability in um your higher dew points, you're going to see that severe weather. So that's where we're seeing that concentration at. I've been talking about this a lot last week, kind of getting you guys ready to go for this as we get this heat dome set up. And like I said, that's really going to steal the, the, the story for this week. And you guys can see there's not a lot of general thunderstorms. So everybody that's locked in this heat wave for the Ohio Valley in the Midwest, it's going to be not cloudy. There's probably not going to be much of any clouds in the sky. It's going to be just a hot, sunny day for a good couple of weeks here uh, for a lot of people here. We may start to see thunderstorms enter the picture toward the end of the week, maybe toward the weekend in this area. But um, just limit your outside be weather smart uh drink water all of that stuff because this is not a heat wave you want to mess around with and uh things happen people can you know die of heat strokes and stuff like that so just be just be weather aware hopefully none of that stuff happens there everybody takes this seriously and we'll keep you guys updated on that nothing on the day four through eight outlook as of right now but the store prediction center has mentioned uh a a chance at severe weather low probability severe weather going through the rest of the week here so we'll be watching that for you guys there i'll go ahead and talk about the upper plains here and what we're going to be seeing over the next 48 hours here a complex of storms is moving through minnesota this morning that'll be out of here by later on this afternoon we'll see some supercells fire off down here into northern kansas and southern nebraska most of those will be a wind and hail threat a couple storms firing off in western minnesota later around 4 to 5 p.m most of our storms firing off in our major uh re region for today around 5 to 6 p.m. So initiation will be a little bit later uh, than 3 or 4 o'clock. So probably around 5, 6, 7 o'clock we'll start to see most of those storms out there. Um, like I said, the uh, line of storms or cluster of storms that tries to develop after midnight tonight will eventually get going here uh, closer to the overnight hours. We'll see that be working its way into portions of North Dakota, South Dakota. This will be our main event for our wind threat tonight. Be moving into portions of Minnesota later on through the overnight hours here and potentially could grow upscale. So I wouldn't be shocked to see that slight risk maybe get extended a little bit further into uh, portions of western Minnesota here. We'll see what happens, or maybe central Minnesota, as this gets to the overnight hours. If this does, in fact, validate tonight, we'll probably hop on and do some overnight coverage for you guys tonight. I'll be here on standby for that, as always. So we'll be watching the, a swath of damaging winds. It extends uh, through about 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon from the Dakotas all the way into Minnesota through the overnight hours. And then that'll leave a boundary in place for tomorrow. We'll get storms going. We'll do it all over again. And tomorrow afternoon, we'll see supercells firing off here uh, up in the Dakotas, up in northern Minnesota. Maybe a higher tornado threat for tomorrow for any discrete storms. And eventually, that'll grow upscale into a line of storms again, and we'll see a bow complex moving its way into Minnesota uh, and up into Canada and up into northern Wisconsin through Wednesday morning. So this is going to be the main area to watch over the next couple of days. Not really much else to talk about severe weather-wise than up here in this caddy corner. Um, if we also look at our um, tornado parameters for the next couple of days here, you can see uh, a pretty decent little corridor today for tornado potential. It's if these storms can stay discrete and not clustered. So we'll be watching this very, very closely. And then tomorrow we'll have a higher corridor of tornado potential. And I do think the Storm Prediction Center will more than likely upgrade to a 5% tornado risk tomorrow just given the parameter spacing that we're seeing as well as the storm mode that will more than likely be super cellular or clustered so just kind of something to uh be very very mindful of as you are going about your day today and tomorrow across this region we'll go ahead and talk about the long range pattern here and what we're going to be seeing and it's really not going to be much of a change guys over the last couple of days you've got a trough over here back off the west coast zonal jet stream you've got a high pressure system that is fully developing here we'll start to shift its way toward the ohio river valley tomorrow really going into tuesday going into wednesday going into thursday we will just see a lot of shear over top of our upper portion of our ridge here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow for severe weather pretty much every single day. If you were in the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, northern Nebraska, getting into Montana, getting into Wyoming, severe weather will more than likely be forecasted every single day through much of this week because we will see that shear uh, over top of our ridge. High pressure will start to break down going into Friday and Saturday, and we'll see a new pressure, uh, a new setup going into next weekend uh, where we'll see more of a dominant high pressure setting up over the plains. And then we start to see a pattern change here going into next week. And this is where I kind of mentioned the idea of some potential for some MCSs, some derecho potentially. Um, you can't really forecast a derecho show until you get about 48 hours out or 24 hours before uh, the event. But what I'm getting at is the damaging wind threat will go up significantly because we'll see that high pressure setting up morely in the center of the United States. We'll have some shear going over top of the ridge and back down on the bottom side of the ridge, and you'll get severe weather up and over that ridge. This happens more times than not during as we get toward the end of July and August. It happened last year as well, and we actually saw a derecho show setup happen out of this. So something I'm watching very closely, uh, and then that ridge may shift back east again. So really, guys, the main theme for the next 
two two and a half weeks is going to be ridging severe weather on top of the ridge uh and and just a, a big big heat dome that's going to be setting up for a lot of people so if you like the hot heat get used to it um it's going to be in place for a while i will say going in, and this is you know over 300 hours out just take this with a grain of salt but just trying to get an idea of what august could look like here we may start to see some mega troughing and i mentioned this in the yesterday's video uh return here and if that were to set up we could see some more significant severe weather uh as ridging sets up so um there will still be severe weather in much of the united states it's just going to be on top of the ridge the west side of the ridge or the east side of the ridge depending on where shear sets up and where the uh, high moves all that stuff will be figured out over the next couple of days here we'll get you guys those sbc outlook updates every single day as always um we'll talk about the temperatures briefly here just so you guys can get an idea of how hot it's actually going to be and you're going to see uh, those triple digit heat indexes hopping or popping up here uh, through much of the week. Those white colors, those gray colors, those are triple digit heat indexes as well as air temperatures. Uh, the air temps are going to be anywhere from 100 to 110 degrees with the feels like temperatures being in 110 plus. So a lot of people will see those triple digit air temps as well as heat indexes. So uh, it's just going to be a gross, gross, brutal, soggy week, guys. It's going to feel like soup outside. It's going to be sometimes unbreathable. You get toward the end of the weekend here. We've got uh, the planes here getting into the 112s, the 115s for actual air temps potentially so um something to just make note of here just stay hydrated be smart about how long you're outside for i know i've said that a lot but i just keep reiterating that because it's very very important uh when we have these type of setups here and uh just it's just gonna be a brutal brutal week guys so uh that's what i've got for you guys i appreciate y'all for watching the video here we'll have a live update later on tonight probably around 9 9 30 central time if anything pops off severe weather wise we'll be on standby for that as always i do appreciate y'all for watching stay safe stay cool drink water and we'll see you guys in the next one